My name is Joy. Another Human Race Club meeting is just about to begin and you're invited to attend. But you'd better hurry into the treehouse if you don't want to miss anything. Okay, you guys. Okay. Okay, you guys. It's time for the meeting to come to order. <sighs> Will the meeting please come to order? It's time for our meeting to start. That's more like it. Now, the first thing we need to talk about is our swim party. What's there to talk about? We've already figured out all the details for the party. We need to decide whether or not we're going to invite outsiders to the party. Why do we need to discuss that? We've never invited outsiders to our other swim parties. Yeah, but just because we've never done it before doesn't mean that we can't do it this time. Is there any particular outsider that you want to invite to the party? Well, uh... Could the outsider you want to invite be a new girlfriend? Of course not. As a matter of fact, it's a guy. Well, just who is this guy? His name is Eric Schaefer, and he... Has tons of money. He's just about as rich as they come. Uh, that's true, AJ. But I wasn't thinking of Eric's money. I was thinking... Don't get me wrong, Teddy. I think I know what's behind your wanting to invite Eric. And I think it's a great idea. If Eric became a member of our club, chances are none of us would ever have to pay club dues again. I can't believe my ears. Are you two advocating that the members of this club get into a relationship like the one you had with Chris Todd? Hmm. If my memory is correct, the situation that Pamela is talking about centered around Chris Todd's birthday parties, and as I recall, this is how it happened. Hey, everybody, look what I got in the mail. AJ shouted as he rushed into the clubhouse. Maggie looked up from the comic book she was reading long enough to respond sarcastically to AJ's enthusiasm. Nothing any of us would get in the mail could be worth that much excitement. Ignoring Maggie's remark, Casey rushed to where A.J. was standing. Teddy and Pamela followed. Well, Teddy demanded. Seeing that he had the three kids' undivided attention, A.J. decided to prolong the suspense as long as he could. With a big grin on his face, A.J. playfully tucked the envelope he was holding into his pants pocket. Teddy caught on to what A.J. was doing and became a little annoyed. Looking at Pamela and Casey, Teddy said, We don't have time for this foolishness. It's time for our weekly meeting. But I want to see what's in the envelope. Realizing that he might lose his audience, A.J. quickly responded, Okay, okay, here it is. He pulled the envelope out of his pocket and held it up for everyone to see. Teddy grabbed the envelope from A.J.'s hand and read the name that was written above the return address. Chris Todd? He looked at A.J. in disbelief. Is this an invitation to Chris's birthday party? You got it. Teddy plopped himself down in a nearby chair and whined. You mean Chris invited you to his birthday party? And he didn't invite me? Bingo! Having no interest in Chris Todd's birthday party, Pamela and Casey returned to their previous activities. The dialogue between Teddy and AJ continued. But how could this be? Teddy's lack of enthusiasm over A.J.'s invitation bothered A.J. Hey, man, I worked hard for that invitation, and no one should know that better than you. Don't you remember how hard you worked for that invitation you got last year? 
On the opposite side of the room, the three remaining club members began their own conversation. So what's the big deal about an invitation to Chris Todd's birthday party? And what does AJ mean when he says worked for it? You girls don't know about Chris Todd's parties because you've never been invited. And chances are you'll never be invited. And just what's that supposed to mean? Maggie's harshness put Casey on the defensive and he fumbled for an answer to her question. What I mean is you wouldn't be invited to Chris Todd's birthday party because you're a girl and Chris hates girls. Well, of all the nerve, Maggie said angrily. Realizing he had said something that upset Maggie, Casey tried to smooth things over. But Maggie, he'd never invite me to his parties either. He only invites his friends to his parties. And to be his friend, you have to have qualifications I don't have. Unmercifully, Maggie continued grilling Casey. Exactly what kind of qualifications are you talking about, Casey? While Casey searched his mind for the correct answer to Maggie's question, Pamela commented, Gosh, Casey, you make it sound as though Chris Todd hires his friends. By this time, the talking among Maggie, Casey, and Pamela had captured Teddy's and AJ's attention, and both boys joined the others. Teddy was the first to respond to Maggie's and Pamela's remarks. You girls probably already know that Chris is super rich. Everything he has is the newest and the best, and everything he does is fantastic. If you're lucky enough to be his friend, you're in for a good time. Teddy paused and AJ took over. Don't you remember the trip Teddy took to Mexico last year? That was for Chris's birthday. Mr. Todd flew Chris and five of his friends in his private plane to Mexico. This year, Mr. Todd's flying Chris and five of us to Southern California, and we're going to Disneyland. Unimpressed with Teddy's and AJ's account of Chris Todd's wealth and travels, Maggie spoke up. I couldn't care less what some spoiled rich kid does to celebrate his birthday. Let's get back to my original question. What qualifications do Chris Todd's friends need to have? And I'd like to know something else. What gives this kid the right to be so picky? AJ made the first attempt to answer Maggie's question. Chris likes the athletic type, and he also likes guys who are popular. But AJ, you're forgetting the most important qualification. Chris Todd likes people who do what he tells them to do. He insists on being boss, and he gets away with it because everyone wants to be his friend. Pamela had been relatively quiet throughout the discussion among the other club members. But as time went by, she couldn't contain herself. If what you say is true, Chris Todd doesn't have any real friends. And that makes me feel sorry for him. Oh, Pamela, don't be so dumb. You don't have to feel sorry for Chris Todd. He has more than you and I will ever have. Unaffected by AJ's remark, Pamela continued. AJ, I feel sorry for you and Teddy too. Allowing Chris Todd to boss you around so you can go to his birthday party? It's shameful. Right on, Pamela. The little time that had been allotted for the club meeting had been consumed by the conversation about Chris Todd and the invitation to his birthday party. Now it was time for everyone to go home. One by one, the club members filed out of the clubhouse. AJ was the last to leave. Deep down inside, he knew Pamela had made some good points, but he didn't want to think about that now. Instead, he turned his thoughts to his upcoming trip to Southern California. I wonder if Disneyland is as fun as everyone says it is, he said to himself as he got on his bike and rode home. For the next few weeks, the human race club saw very little of A.J., he had become a part of an elite group consisting of Chris Todd and the boys who were going with him to Southern California. Every recess and lunch hour, the group could be seen huddled together making plans for their trip to Disneyland. It was interesting to watch the group change from a cluster of boys who hardly knew each other to a close group who seemed to need no one but themselves. In addition to being exclusive, an air of superiority surrounded these boys. After all, how many kids could say they were flying to Southern California on a private plane? 
As the date of departure drew nearer, there was a noticeable change in the group. It seemed to have lost one of its members. The missing person was Chris Todd. No one knew why Chris wasn't around, not even the boys who were considered his most recent friends. Undaunted by Chris Todd's absence, the group continued to meet. But without Chris, the interest in the trip and the belief that it would really happen began to fade. I've tried calling Chris's house a million times, and there's no answer. A frustrated AJ told the group. One of the boys responded. My mom found out that Chris and his parents are staying with Chris's grandparents. My dad knows Mr. Todd, and he's going to call him in his office. I'll phone you guys tonight and let you know what my dad finds out. The Human Race Club had assembled for its usual weekly meeting when, quite unexpectedly, AJ wandered into the clubhouse. Well, well, if it isn't our fair weather friend, Maggie said in her usual sarcastic manner. Seeing that AJ was depressed, Teddy shot Maggie a look that said, be quiet. Then he greeted the long-lost club member. Hi, AJ, what's up? After a long pause, AJ began to talk. The trip to Southern California has been canceled. Supposedly, Mr. Todd made one too many bad investments. The Todds are flat, busted, broke. They're having to sell almost everything they own, including the private plane. <laughs> oh no, that's terrible. I feel so bad for Chris. You feel bad for Chris? What about me? I'm the one who doesn't get to go to Disneyland. How could you be so self-centered, AJ? Chris Todd's family has lost almost everything they own, and all you can think about is the fact that you won't be going to Disneyland. <clears throat> Feeling a little embarrassed, AJ cleared his throat and began to fidget. He knew Pamela was right. Mm. But Pamela, what could I do for Chris Todd? What could any of us do? It was quiet for a moment, and then Teddy spoke excitedly. I know something we could do. We could give Chris a surprise birthday party right here in the clubhouse. Wow! That's a great idea. That is a good idea. I thought Chris Todd hated girls. If that's true, he's not going to like being at a party with Pamela and me. AJ gave Maggie a dirty look. Don't be such a drag, Maggie. The party's a good idea, and you know it. The next few days were filled with a hustle and bustle of getting ready for Chris Todd's surprise party. Casey took over the refreshments. Pamela worked on the decorations. Maggie rounded up the prizes. Teddy and AJ planned the games and activities, and everyone helped call to invite the guests. It was a great team effort. It was AJ's job to get Chris to the party without letting him in on what was happening. With the help of Mr. and Mrs. Todd, he was successful. From the moment everyone yelled, surprise, to the moment the last invited guest left the clubhouse, Chris was ecstatic. His birthday party turned out to be an unforgettable event. This was the best birthday party I've ever had, Chris said as he was getting ready to leave. I never knew parties like this could be so much fun. Even though girls were invited, the girls were the best part, Chris replied with a wink. And to everyone's surprise, Maggie blushed. As he thanked everyone and waved goodbye, the club members knew that the party had made a difference in Chris Todd's life. When Chris was out of sight, AJ spoke up. It was just as well that I didn't go to Southern California, because I couldn't have taken everything I needed. 
How's that? The baggage area in the Todd's plane is huge. But you guys couldn't have flown in the baggage area. And what fun would Disneyland be without my best friends? All right. Casey yelled as the five friends gave each other the club handshake. Co-era snamu. Co-era snamu. So what can we learn from all of this? Unfortunately, Chris Todd was allowed to buy friendships. People became his friends because of the material things he promised to give them. Chris and his friends did not realize that friendships built on possessions are built on shaky ground. When the possessions are gone, the friendships can be gone. It is best to choose a friend because of what the person is rather than what the person has. In some ways, Chris's friends had given Chris control over their lives by letting him boss them around. This was not good for Chris, nor was it good for Chris's friends. Controlling his own life was enough of a responsibility for Chris. He didn't need the added burden of controlling his friends' lives. Besides, Chris's friends needed to take responsibility for their own lives. No one could live their lives better than they could. AJ also learned a valuable lesson. By neglecting his old friends for his new friends, he jeopardized some of his most valuable relationships. It's good to make new friends, but keeping old friends is just as important. And here's a lesson that everyone learned. Life has many wonderful things to offer, but nothing is as wonderful as a friend. However, friendships don't just happen. They require a special kind of effort. The best way to get a friend is to be a friend. I saw Chris Todd the other day. He was taking homework to a buddy who had missed school. Chris introduced me to two of his new friends, and I only wished that Maggie could have been there. You see, one of them was a girl. It's just about time for the meeting to be over. Why don't we go back inside the treehouse to see what's happening? Okay, okay. I admit that the thought of recruiting someone who has a lot of money did cross my mind. In all honesty, I get tired of not having enough money to do everything we want. I agree! Teddy's plan is brilliant! It's excellent creative financing! There are better ways to handle our financial problems. Like what? I know one way we could do better. Sometimes we buy our refreshments, and that costs a lot of money. Maybe we should make all our refreshments. That's not realistic. We don't have an oven or a stove. But we could take turns making refreshments at home and bringing them to our meetings, just like Maggie did for today's meeting. Just because I'm not prissy doesn't mean I don't like to cook once in a while. But that's beside the point. Pamela brought up the Chris Todd situation, and that's what I want to talk about. I'm just concerned that we don't make the same mistake that you guys made with Chris Todd. I want our relationships with people to be based on something more important than money. You're right, Pamela. I'm really sorry I ever brought the whole thing up. And I'm sorry I jumped on the bandwagon. I should have known better. There are some things more important than money. Like our friendship with one another. That's all we really need to make our swim party a success. Yeah! 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 So, there will be no outsiders at the party. Yeah! Well, now that we've settled that issue, is there any further business? Yes, there is. There's the matter of my fresh, out of the oven, homemade chocolate chip cookies. Chocolate chip? My favorite! I move that the meeting be adjourned so we can sample Maggie's cookies. I second the motion. The meeting is adjourned. Let's eat! There are few things that are more important than friends, and few things that are more enjoyable than spending time with friends. I'm glad that you decided to spend this time with us, and I hope I'll see you again at our next Human Race Club meeting. Meanwhile, here's a song about what it means to be a good friend. It's entitled, I Will Be Your Friend. <laughs> 